welcome to round four of Rallycross Challenge Europe for 2015. After the Czech Republic, Lithuania and Belgium, we're now in the Netherlands at the Euro circuit in Falkensvard. This is Rallycross Challenge Europe. The Euro circuit in Falkensvard has been going since the 1970s. It's well known in Rallycross circles. Right after the start, through the Pear Eklund corner, that leads onto the tarmac section and then to the gravel with the Joker Lap Loop. The line on top in black, the regular circuit beneath, is the Joker Lap Loop that everybody must take once in every heat or final. Then through the Jubilee corner and the Tarzan corner to end out the lap. There are four classes within Rallycross Challenge Europe and as usual we start with Super 1600. Among the 12 entries, four Dutchmen and two Belgians. But after the first three rounds of the series, points leader is Sven Seliger from Germany with his Ford Fiesta. Igor Sanin won round two in Lithuania and round three in Belgium, but he struggled in the opener in the Czech Republic. We'll take a look at the heats in the Super 1600. Three heats all on the Sunday. Parkinsvart is a very compact event. Artis Balmanis, the Latvian in his Renault Twingo, makes a great start to this one ahead of Tess Heitzen in his Fiesta. The Dutchman hoping for a home podium, but in these treacherously slippery conditions, it's going to be very tricky. He takes a joker lap immediately. That's on the loose, whereas the main track is still on tarmac at that stage. Another Dutchman, Gerhard de Brewer in the green and black Suzuki Swift in the background, showing just how treacherous the track is. His dad was a rally crosser. His uncle, René Kusters, for many years in the European Championship. He's hoping for success here as well. So is Sven Seliger. Long, wide line in the Fiesta, but just look what that does. No grip and slows him right down. Can't get around the outside of Egor Sanin and loses three places. Artis Balmanis, fastest in heat one in the Renault Twingo. In these conditions, it's not a quick time. In the third heat, watch the car in the middle. Peter van der Vega of the Netherlands in his Toyota Yaris, the white machine, gets the squeeze here around the nose of the Fiesta. Contact. And Zdenek Kuchera, the Czech driver in his Skoda Fabia, also rolling into the barriers. He lines up in a new car for the restarted heat. Kuchera also there in his Skoda. Van der Vega, second fastest in heat one. Third fastest in heat two, one of the big surprises of the weekend. Clean start as Egor Sanin takes the lead from Artis Balmanis and Tis Heitzen. Third in the yellow, white and black Ford Fiesta. Behind the leader Sanin, Artis Balmanis gets out of shape in his Renault Twingo. Fastest in heat one and heat two, the Latvian. Loses a place there to the Fiesta. Egor Sanin racing on to fastest time in the third of the heat in his Renault Clio. Artis Balmanis losing a little time and that will give the others a hope for something in the final. There won't be a semi in the Super 1600s this weekend. So Igor Sanin top scoring 16 points out of the qualifying heats. Artis Balmanis in second in his Renault Twingo and Peter van der Vega in the Toyota Yaris. The wild card, a surprise in third place. Big surprise as they line up for the six lap final is there is no Sven Seliger. The Ford Fiesta has engine problems. It will not start. Igor Sanin on pole position. And looking further back, Peter van der Vega on the outside of the front row. Gerho de Brue and Willem Veltman, the Dutchman, on the back row. Away we go then. 17 year old Igor Sanin, the man with the inside line down to the first corner, makes an excellent start. Artis Barmanis in second position. And the wild card in third, Peter van der Vega in his Toyota Yaris, ahead of Tis Heysen, another Dutchman in the Ford Fiesta. Into the slippery conditions, Igor Sanin with Artis Balmanis giving chase. And you can see the battle for third is starting to drop away a little bit. Peter van der Vega holding off the season regular Tis Heysen. Conditions a whole lot better than in qualifying. 17-year-old Russian leading the 25-year-old Artis Balmanis of Latvia in second place. Two young stars fast emerging in 2015 as big names in rallycross in Europe. And Sanin and Balmanis keeping their noses clear. 
They're playing a tactical game. They'll take their joker lap much later on. Hedson stuck there, should have taken his then. Here's a battle further back between two Dutchmen. Gerard de Brewer and Willem Veltman in the Citroen C2 on the inside of the Suzuki Swift driver. Holds the line. Battle between the two Renault youngsters for supremacy here. Artus Baumannis cracks first, takes the joker lap. Peter Sanin does it on the final lap, comes out in front to claim his third straight win. The Russian unstoppable, great result for Peter van der Vega, the Dutchman, third place behind Baumannis and Sanin. Before we hear from our winner, here's a man who didn't make it through to the final. Uh, yeah, me it went went okay. I had a punch in my first one. I had two seconds. Uh, it just put me. It laid me in tenth position for the for the semi-finals. But it, we didn't run no semis today. But you live and learn. Nothing you can do about that. That's racing. British Championship regular Craig Lomax a little disappointed. Igor Sanin said in the first heat didn't have the right settings on the car. In the second heat, pretty much the same. Things are only a little bit better, but I won the third and that gave me confidence to go into the final. Maximum points for the Russian this weekend and that, with Sven Seliger not scoring, is starting to bring this into a two-horse race. Igor Sanin in the championship just two ahead of Artis Balmanis. In Super Touring Cars Minus, the championship is equally tight. Josh Sterkens, one point behind series leader Raman Castoral. There'll be 11 competitors in the field, eight from Belgium, two Dutchmen and Castoral from the Czech Republic. His Opel Astra has been the pace setter all season. After good conditions in free practice in the qualifying heats, it was pretty miserable wet weather. Belgium's Andre Sneijs in the Ford Fiesta leading the splash through the mud. Josh Sterkens right behind in the Volvo C30. You can see just how tricky these conditions are. Eric Wilkinson in the Opel Astra in the barriers. That was all in heat one. First and second heats won by Roman Castorel. Josh Sterkens has work to do. Andre Sneijs in the middle of the grid for this next heat. And as they get away, rushing down into the first corner. Good start from the white Mitsubishi of Joel Strax. Around the outside, the Fiesta gets very squirrely and then trouble clatters into Jochen Stevens in the Opel Astra GTE. Bringing an end to his heat too. Roman Castorel came out on top after qualifying ahead of Josh Sterkens and Robert Horace in the Opel Corsa. A little bit of clear up work for Roman Castoral, sweeping his grid spot before the final. He lines up on pole in the Opel Astra. Josh Sterkens, the black, white and yellow Volvo in the centre of the front row. And Robbie Joris, the youngest driver in the field, just 18 years old. The Belgian did really well in Mass Mechelen with his Opel. What about the Dutchmen? Well, Chris Merlins further back in his BMW 120. Not a great start position. Let's see how far he can make it up the order. And Jörg van der Ven in the Volkswagen Polo. Last row of the grid. Oh, and a dreadful getaway. But a good start from Josh Sterkens. Takes the lead. The 60-year-old knows this circuit really well. Roman Castorel in second place. And the start, perhaps more important here than almost anywhere else. Overtaking is going to be hard. The racing line is drying out, but offline very slippery indeed. So Josh Sterkens with the lead. Now, when will he take his joker lap? At the moment, it looks as though Roman Castoral is intent on following him. Couple already gone through their joker laps. And Castoral piling the pressure on. He's not going to allow Josh Sterkens to escape. And this is great tactics from the driver from the Czech Republic. Keep the veteran under pressure all the way. Try and force a mistake. As they come round past the joker lap, both have omitted it. Saw Ivo van der Brandt in the Mitsubishi Colt dive in though there from third. The Opel Astra sliding around behind the Volvo, relieving the pressure just momentarily on Josh Derkens as they came out of the Tarzan corner. Roman Castorel still piling it on. Josh Derkens still holds the controlling hand here. 
He was probably rallying here at Valkensfeld when Roman Castoral was at school. And as long as he stays in front, Castoral is going to be forced to take his joker lap first. And then Josh Derkins knows what he has to do. And in goes Castoral. Last minute change of plan there, I think. Big lock up as he went onto the loose. Here come the rest of them. Some have done their joker laps, some haven't. But it's all eyes on the front of the field. Josh Derkins stays out. Roman Castoral now a few car lengths behind after the joker lap. And there is Jol Strax in third place. Roman Castoral closing fast on Josh Derkins. The gabble may not have paid off for the veteran when he takes the joker lap as he has to do right at the end. The Astra goes by and Sterkins is behind as they take the run to the chequered flag. Once more, Roman Castoral using his speed and ingenuity. He has the lead. Joel Strax in third place. He'll take the joker lap on the final lap. Roman Castorell out front. And Josh Sterkins can do nothing about it. He was holding up the Opel Astra early on with the Volvo. And now he doesn't have the speed to make amends. Strax through the joker lap. Will he come out in front of Ivo Vandenbrandt? He does. It's Roman Castorell who's victorious once more. Josh Sterkens in second and Joel Strax completes the podium ahead of Ivo Vandenbrandt and Robbie Yodis. Celebrations for Roman Castorell. Maximum point score again from Valkensvard winning the tactical battle with Josh Sterkens. The veteran says, my start was perfect. I got the lead into the first corner. Had to keep an eye on Castorell to see when he was going to take the joker lap. When he did, I went in the very next lap. So he only had one lap to take advantage. But he got by me again. So I guess I have to be happy with uh, second place. Well, it's a maximum score weekend for Roman Castorell. He now has a three-point championship lead over Jos Sterkens. Stay with us for much more action. Welcome back to round four of Rallycross Challenge Europe at Valkensvaard in the Netherlands. We're looking now at Super Touring Cars Plus. Steve Folders in the number 77 Ford Escort leads the championship. But in Belgium, Luke Maris in the Volvo 242 beat him. And Luke Maris is here as well, like a lot of other Belgian rivals. Three heats and after that, they head into the final. And of course, the wet weather, meaning that conditions were very tricky indeed. Steve Holders in the Mark II Escort and the old Volvo 242s, both cars developed in the late 1970s, still leading the pack in Super Touring Cars Plus. Great getaway from Folders once more, the Volvos, the BMWs battling for the minor positions behind. But in this second heat, takes an early lead in the Pear Eklund corner. He was fastest in heat two and heat three as well. And Folders, as has been his style this season, topping out qualifying. Davy Layson's BMW M3 second, Ludo Hermans in his Ford Escort, third fastest in the qualifying heat. Ludo Hermans on the outside of the front row of the grid in the newer shape Escort. Dave Layson in the BMW M3, but no Steve Folders. Differential problems. Looks like he is not going to make the final, and that is heartbreaking. Away they go then without the championship leader. Good start from the front row man. Luda Hermans with a Ford Escort takes the lead. Trouble for somebody behind though. A bonnet has sprung open. I think that's Philip van der Heyden. He's in a BMW this weekend instead of his regular Volvo because it crashed last time out in Belgium. And yeah, looks like the bonnet pins were done up properly. Luda Hermans in the lead, 71, right behind him, Davy Layson in the Belgian coloured BMW. Third place is Christoph Tarvenberg, the Belgian in his Volvo C30. Surely Philip van der Heyden can't carry on like that though, can he? Luda Hermans with the lead, but under pressure. 
And again, as so often at Falkensvard, when you take the joker lap, could make a big difference. The lead pair are pulling away from Tarnberg in the Volvo. So it could be down to these two. Finally making the pits though, van der Heiden. Meanwhile, the leaders are battling hard. Davy Lyson in the BMW pushing Ludo Hermans. Battles all the way down the order. And Hermans can't shake off the BMW driver. Does he need to? Oh, and on the inside in the pair Reckland corner, Davy Lyson, what a move. Now that takes confidence in the machinery and in the driver that you are rally crossing against. Davy Lyson with the lead. Third place is Christoph Tarnberg. Volvo just sliding a little wide. Davy Lason in the BMW ahead of Ludo Hermans, who takes his joker lap now, trying to make an advantage for himself. And that puts the pressure back then onto Davy Lason. He's got to keep the speed up when he's out on his own. And hope the Ford can't make a counterattack. Christoph Tarnberg in third place. Great showing for the Belgian in his Volvo, but the gaps are opening. Okay, here we go then. Davy Lason finally goes around the Joker lap loop and he comes out comfortably in front. Luda Hermans in second. There's the third place man, Christoph Tarnberg. So the BMW with a handy advantage as he crosses the line once more. And this is really going to be trouble now for Luda Hermans. Looks as though the BMW has better speed. Davy Lason took the lead and held it through the Joker lap. BMW six cylinder engine keeps him out front. Luda Hermans in the Mark III Ford Escort. Christoph Tamberg in the Volvo C30. Well, of course, we are missing our championship leader, Steve Folders. And that is going to tighten up the championship no end, although Davy Lason, not a regular season long competitor. However, with two more rounds of the championship, there is still a lot to play for. Davy Lason ahead of Luda Hermans, the gap's growing. Christoph Tarnberg in third spot. It looks as though not much is going to change that. Checkered flag flies. It is victory for Davy Lason in second place. Ludo Hermans and Christoph Tarnberg claiming third spot. Well, let's hear from our happy winner. Davy Lason said you've really got to attack when you're in these finals and uh, some drop by the wayside. I was driving thinking, well, I might make a mistake, but I'm going to have a go and try and take the lead. And it worked, so very good. To round things out here in the Netherlands, it is time to take a look at the supercars. And the man who's been the dominant force so far this season, Roman Stepanenko, although Jos Janssen might want to argue that. Max Puka here from Austria as well. Roman Stepanenko, the Russian in his Citroen. Certainly had a very strong last couple of events. Takes the lead here. Contact behind, Jos Janssen clattered in two by Puka and a second time and a third. Well, let's take a look on board with the Austrian. Looks to the inside, Janssen tries to close the door, maybe a little late. And hard to avoid that contact. Well, as the Austrian carries on, no chance in this qualifying heat for Jos Janssen. Lots of damage and a long way back. It's all about speed in the qualifying heats. Roman Stepanenko was fastest in that heat. In heats two and three, another opportunity for Jos Janssen on the outside of Max Puka. Janssen takes the lead, Puka in second place. But Janssen overcooks it and throws the car off the track and into the barriers. Maybe focusing a little bit too much on not making contact in the first corner. He didn't make it round the first corner at all. Max Puka did, however, and with a clear track in front of him, was the Austrian that went fastest in heat two. 
With Janssen in trouble, only four cars in the qualifying heat, but that didn't stop Johnny Verkuringen in the yellow Subaru making contact with Ole Grishin, Skoda Fabia, as he came off his joker lap. Verkuringen got a black flag for that. Roman Stepanenko and Max Puka powering by the abandoned Skoda. And Yang Grishin finishing in sixth position after the qualifying heats. Roman Stepanenko taking maximum points ahead of Max Puka and Johnny Verkuringen in third. Only fourth place for Jos Janssen. Lots of work to do in the final. Max Puka getting himself ready as he heads to the grid. Roman Stepanenko on pole. And Jos Janssen on row two must have the perfect start here. Revs rise. Clutches a biting point. All 600 horsepower released through the four-wheel drive. Four-wheel steer monsters. Max Puka with the lead. Janssen looking to the inside. And the first corner dives in deep behind Roman Stepanenko. He's gone through into second. And for Kuringen in the yellow Subaru, nearly taking third as they get onto the loose. Janssen all over Stepanenko. Puka on the outside line. Does he manage to make it through in third? He does not. For Kuringen, Subaru is through. Max Puka's taken the Joker lap immediately, and that's probably a good call from him. He's got it out of the way. Now the lead trio battling. Roman Stepanenko in front of Jos Janssen. Janssen very sideways. Six lap final as ever. Stepanenko, the Russian, Jos Janssen, the Belgian, and Johnny Verkuringen, another Belgian in the Subaru, in third place. Oh, Verkuringen out very wide. Big mistake from him. Max Puka will be closing in fast from behind. And Verkuringen barely getting the car back on track before he's on the loose. And look at Jos Janssen throwing the car sideways. A massive slide all over the back of Stepanenko. Verkuringen just in front of the Austrian Puka. And onto the Joker lap goes Jos Janssen, but a massive tank slapper there for Roman Stepanenko. Huge loss of time. What was going on over the limit there? Max Puka in third as Janssen comes just behind Stepanenko after his Joker lap. When the Russian has to take his lap, Jos Janssen will have the lead that he takes to the checkered flag for victory. Stepanenko second and Puka in third. Jos Janssen all over the dirt to the line, but just enough to hold on to win it. Top points for the Belgians. Stepanenko defeated, almost crashed, and Max Puka completes the podium in third. Well, not much I can say about the heat, says Jos Janssen. First heat this morning, I got a good start. Somebody pushed me from the back. I got spun around. There was no chance of winning, so uh, I bailed out because I was already in fifth. Second heat, again made a good start, a little bit too optimistic perhaps, just drove off into the sand. Third heat went pretty well, but the car wouldn't turn properly. Turned out there was something wrong with the wheel, but the guys got it fixed for the final. In the final I was uh, very careful in the, in the start corner not to have uh, the same problem again with Jos Janssen coming from the back. And, um, uh, uh, we reckon he uh, hit, um, uh, pushed in behind Janssen, so I was uh, fourth for a little while. But then I took the choker lap very early and was able to uh, uh, pick up uh, that place and, uh, and finish third in the final. Good tactics from the Austrian. Good win from Jos Janssen in the final, but Roman Stepanenko better in qualifying. And second in the final takes the top point score here in the Supercars class. And that's it from Falkensfahrt. Two more rounds to go and all the championship titles are too close to call. We'll see you next time out in Austria.